This video ranks the top 10 role players in the NBA today. The modern game is superstar driven, but without sufficient depth surrounding your top offensive weapons, a team can't make a push for the championship. They may not get the ball as much as the first, second, or third scoring options on their team, but aside from the main options, stay tuned to find out the most elite players in basketball. Only 21.3% of you watching this video right now are subscribed, so if you're looking for consistent NBA content, then you're in the right place. Before you comment who should have made it, to be clear, these players being ranked today weren't in the top three in scoring on their respective teams during the 2021 regular season. Number 10, DeAndre Hunter. Imagine how good the Hawks would be if their starting small forward had have played more than 23 games this year. The sophomore DeAndre Hunter was the fourth pick back in the 2019 NBA Draft, having shown tremendous defensive upside since then, proving he has a chance to be one of the better wing stoppers in the game if he keeps developing. Despite battling a knee injury all season, Hunter played in the first round of the playoffs against the New York Knicks. In that five-game series, DeAndre struggled from the field overall as he only shot 38%. However, he shot 52% from three-point range while helping to lock down Julius Randle. Unfortunately, Hunter was ruled out for the playoffs on June 9th with a torn lateral meniscus in his right knee. So let's hope the intriguing young wing makes a speedy recovery this offseason. Number nine, Draymond Green. Raymond did shoot the second lowest field goal percentage of his career, plus his third worst three point percentage tally, so he can't rank any higher than number nine. But the reason he still makes this list, even though at times he seems incompetent offensively, is because of his chemistry with Stephen Curry and the fact that he made the all defensive first team this year. Green assisted Curry on 194 baskets, which was the most anyone assisted a teammate on the season. The second highest assist combo was Phoenix's Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton, followed by Atlanta's Trey Young and John Collins. Green thrives when he has less responsibility to score himself, so when Clay gets back next year, the former DPOY's efficiency should bounce back. Number eight, PJ Tucker. If PJ could do more offensively, this man would undeniably rank in the top five. While he hits about every three-point shot from the corner he attempts, Tucker only shot 30% from the field and 22% from distance in the Bucks series against the Nets. Having said that, his one-on-one -on -one defense completely makes up for that lack of offensive production as Tucker's pesky, laterally quick, and extremely tough. I mentioned this in my Bucks video the other day, but now that PJ's taken on the challenge of stopping Durant over a seven-game series, anyone he attempts to lock down for the rest of the playoffs will be a walk in the park compared to that. Without his ISO defense, the Bucks aren't the top contenders like they are, so PJ had to be mentioned in this video. Number seven, Kevin Herter. With the defensive pressure that the playoffs provide, Carrying your team to a win with tough buckets one after another is extremely tough. Doing that in a game seven, a win or go home scenario for both teams, that's twice as demanding. But ATL's 22 year old shot creating phenom in Kevin Herter stood up to the task of a do or die scenario. The 6'7 wing out of Maryland dropped 27 points on 10 for 18 shooting, sending the Sixers packing. Herter's the glue guy who kept Atlanta going through the season. When the team is healthy, Herter's the team's playmaker for the second unit. However, due to injuries, Herter's been pressed into service as a starter. The Red Velvet's done a great job replicating the production of DeAndre Hunter, which is what the team needed. Kevin's led the Hawks in steals during the regular season, and in the first round, he was second on the team in blocks per game. His adaptability is one of his greatest assets, but he's still only in his third season. So while Herter's a role player for now, we could see him as a star in a few years' time. Number six, Joe Ingles. Headed to the Olympics to play for Australia's national team, Jingling Joe's coming off a stellar campaign for the recently gone fishing Utah Jazz. 
Ingles is the ideal 3 and D player, but what's most likable about him, at least for Utah Jazz fans, is his persona. Joe's one of the best trash talkers in all of basketball, and is one of those guys you hate if he's not on your team. The Aussie ranked fourth in the league among small forwards in defensive rating during the regular season, and fifth among all players in three-point percentage. Despite the Jazz losing four straight to the Clippers, Ingles was one of the most efficient players in the series, so you can't blame Jingle and Joe for Utah getting eliminated. Number five, Danilo Gallinari. Gallo's an essential piece for the Hawks being three wins away from the NBA Finals. He can post up and knock down 15 footers in anyone's grill. He's exceptional at spacing the floor in a pick and pop, shooting 41% from distance in the regular season. The Hawks' offensive attack is so much more dynamic with Danilo on the roster, so he's been an excellent free agent signing for them. Number four, Mikael Bridges. The 10th pick back in the 2018 NBA Draft has developed into the perfect piece on the wing next to Devin Booker. The 7-1 wingspan of the Suns' starting small forward Mikhail Bridges allows him to shoot over the top of defenders offensively despite having an unorthodox release. And on the other end, that length has made him one of the better wing defenders in all of basketball. Mikhail's third pro campaign saw him shoot a stellar 54% from the field overall and 42.5% from deep. Number three, Jay Crowder. The 12-year NBA veteran provides vocal leadership combined with elite defensive IQ and physicality. Those qualities were a big reason for why the Miami Heat went to the 2020 NBA Finals. Just look how the Heat fell off this year without Crowder. In Miami's five-game upset of Milwaukee in last year's second round, Crowder was on Giannis most of the time and held him in check. In Phoenix, the value of Jay's been overlooked because he was signed next to Chris Paul. But the mentorship he's provided to DeAndre Ayton, Mikhail Bridges, and Cameron Johnson has helped their development as young players. Crowder's jumper has been somewhat inconsistent this year, which is why he can't rank any higher. But Jay's defense, hustle, and timely buckets rank him as the third best role player in the NBA. Number two, Seth Curry. In the Sixers' seven-game second-round exit to the Atlanta Hawks, Curry wasn't the problem for Philly. As Ben Simmons choked on Vegemite toast, Seth was lighting it up all series long. He averaged 21 points on 61% shooting from the field and a miraculous 59% from three-point range. It has to be tough to be the little brother of a two-time MVP, but Seth is more than simply marking his place in the NBA. He's proving to be an elite shooter. Ahead of John Collins, Kawhi Leonard, Reggie Jackson, and DeAndre Ayton, Seth Curry's been the most efficient volume shooter of the 2021 playoffs. Number one, Reggie Jackson. Early in Jackson's career, he was the leading scorer on a playoff team and averaged 19 points per game in 79 outings for the Detroit Pistons. Five years later, starting the year as the Clippers' fourth leading scorer during the regular season, Jackson's been forced back into a star role during the playoffs. And Jackson's been damn good. There's only two players in NBA history to average three plus three pointers and 65% true shooting in a single playoff run. Steph Curry in 2017 and Reggie Jackson in 2021. Reggie is averaging 18 points per game on near 50-40-90 shooting splits these playoffs. Clipper fans have been damn lucky that Jackson's filled the scoring void that Kawhi's injury left. Reggie's become a fan favorite in LA and has developed into one of the most fundamentally sound guards in the world. But who's the best role player in your opinion? Let me know in the comments section down below. You're the best for sticking around. This was D-Flow. Have a great one, and I'll see you next video.